Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial for Pixel Art in GIMP. I'm gonna load up GIMP 2.8 is the one I use and try to keep up because this is gonna be real fast. So first things first, you because you're dealing with small pixels you want to be able to navigate around your picture pretty fast and a quick way to manipulate this is by going uh, by adding a navigation tab and I'm gonna do this in the, here in the upper right corner so I don't need this histogram I'm just gonna go click here and add tab navigation there it is so now I have a small thumbnail I can drag around it uh, to to navigate around the picture I can use the plus button to zoom way into it that you're gonna be doing this a lot in pixel art so and with this I can easily navigate around the image but because I don't wanna be uh, like drawing something and then going back out to check how everything looks and then going back in and going back out I also want to add an extra window just so that I have the image open up at uh, 100 or 200 percent all the time so I'm gonna get this one a little smaller go to view and create a new view right on the top so now I have another window open up and I'm gonna just set this one to 100 percent uh, or even more usually for me personally I just have it at 200% and because I don't want all this clutter in this small window I'm gonna prettify it by going to view and turning off the rulers the scroll bars and status bar so now I just have nice one nice little window over here you can even turn off the menu bars don't panic then you can just right click into it and then go to view menu and then just you know use all your menus with the right click I just leave this on for now so here we have one window show me the overhead view and then here we have another window and gonna go to usually I do it 800 percent when I do stuff like this you will want to be zoomed in that much because you want to see the individual pixels and to make this clear you want to turn on the grid so we're gonna go view and show grid over here so by default this is a 10 by 10 pixel grid uh, so there's 10 pixels per each grid you can go to image configure grid and then turn this down way to one pixel this way you can see the individual pixels how they are usually I find the black lines a little distracting Sometimes I'm gonna work with 8 pixels and I'm just gonna leave it like this but if I go way down to 1 pixels I'm, I will want to change the line style to just intersection dots so this just gives me nice little dots at intersections and it doesn't the, the black lines of the grid don't uh, bother me because usually that will just take away from whatever colors you're using and then the remaining space I have here I usually use just to look at some references if I don't have my iPad set up as a second screen I'm just gonna use this space for example here I have a picture of a Pac-Man I'm gonna use just download this put it over here so now I can actually use this as a preview of what I'm drawing especially in pieces like this where I have a lot of uh, culture pop culture references and not many things are drawn just from head you know and now we are going to draw this guy so we are gonna need some brushes and we will want to for for example if I just try to draw you see I have I get this hog of everything uh, anti alias things this is because I'm right now the default selection is the paintbrush what you want to be using for pixel art is the pencil and another thing so you see this one just creates a nice pure color uh, one other problem is if you're using a Wacom tablet it's gonna be pressure sensitive so as you can see I can go from light to dark you don't want that so you wanna turn that off and the way you do this is first we need uh, another dialogue here right at the top two options actually it already indicated I have it open over here but I like to use this one just for layers so I'm just gonna drag this one two options and drag them over here because I like to have them open here uh, separately and let's also make this a little bigger so there's more space for two options resize it down here you don't actually need to see this tab this is the brush selection tool because on the tool options just by clicking over here you get the same selection the same same dialogue 
and so instead of so what I was talking about yeah if, if you use a Wacom you need to turn off the pressure sensitivity and this is over here in dynamics just click here and choose the dynamics off option so now you see I have a nice clean pixel art uh, round brush what you don't want to do actually is have a round brush you want to just have a pixel brush and there's the the second one over here is actually called a pixel brush so now if you're gonna draw it you're drawing big pixels but what you really really want to be doing is draw one pixels of just like squares of one pixel size precisely so the problem is here you have size set to 20 by default you can just do drag on the topper part get it down to one or drag on the like push on the smaller bar to get it down to one or just double click here set one and here we have our default one pixel pencil pencil to brush and this is what we use to create stuff out so now I'm gonna quickly draw out I'm gonna just switch here to black to default colors black I'm just gonna draw an outline of this character so also I'm gonna go to a new layer I'm gonna create a transparent layer I always draw new things and new layers so I can move them around easily later on and what you will if you're just going to create this ellipse as a guide now if I'm just gonna if I'm if I just use this normally and then you see here it it's again it's anti-aliased and this is because we when you use the ellipse selection tool you have to actually turn the anti-aliasing checkbox off so when you have always when you use pixel art turn anti-aliasing off as default and now let's do, do a nice I don't know 19 by 19 that sounds good now what I usually do is I just go and place it with my hand like this another option is I just fill this stuff out and then I go do a smaller cir circle inside and then just delete but what this uh, leaves you is with a kind of a jagged line which you want to then usually also if you if I was just drawing a line here yeah there will be some some imperfections that I want to get rid of so I take my eraser tool and now again by default this will be again anti-aliased because but as you don't have a separate tool like you have a pencil and, a, and the, the pen to control anti-aliasing with the eraser tool you just have to turn hard edge over in the bottom left on and now we have a nice cool eraser to get rid of all these jaggies in the lines and for example here in lines I will also clean this up so usually uh, this just now comes down to how much experience you have with drawing usually I just uh, draw things out as I would be like painting and only later on I would clean them down now that I have the line art done I'm just gonna position him again move the active layer otherwise you're just gonna be grabbing the one behind so put this here now what I want to do is I want to color him so the way I'm not just going to go pick colors all the time like this what I want to do is I want to work in a cert certain palette of colors and for that I'm just going to create a new tab with colors over here and I'm gonna put it way down to the bottom so I have my layers my navigation on top and then my layers and then my colors over here and then I'm gonna add another tab called palettes and in here you have a lot of pre-made ones the one I always use almost always like uh, unless I'm doing an S piece I want to be doing I want to be using the Visibone 2 color palette this one and then go back here and then just go to the the fifth tab and then this one just shows you all the colors in the palette so here I have all the Visibone colors like for example I have you can switch to ZX Spectrum I these are my custom palettes they're not the in-game the NAS palette you can download them on the internet but Visibone 2 is inside and it just has very saturated colors which I like for this kind of pieces 
so this is why I'm gonna be uh, using those so uh, I just take some nice warm yellow for him with a bucket selection another thing once you are once you're happy with your colors once you get have a color like in your um, in your picture for example I have to paint this yellow again uh, I will just pick the color from the character just shift control click just use the color picker and sometimes you will want to color pick for example I like this red over here for for the mouth but if I color pick it it's just gonna pick up black because this is actually a, I'm on a new layer so if you want to if you want to pick from anywhere in the picture you actually want to switch to the color picker and click the sample merged button now you can go back to your pencil and then color pick with control as, as uh, you did before and it will actually pick up the color also from other layers because it's sampling merged I'm just gonna draw his mouth here Finally, I want to do the shadow, uh, and I'm going to do this on another layer. And actually, I'm going to just so I'm going to just be drawing the shadow on this layer behind, so I can just paint behind it. Uh, and the way I have lighting set up in this scene is I will use uh, another layer to actually calculate where the shadows fall on the ground. I, the way it's set up is I just I just have the lighting coming diagonally uh, from top right to bottom left so the way I calculate shadows is just imagine where on the ground would be this hand for for example it would come from from this point uh, on the ground and draw the height from the point on the ground to the top of it so for example this hand if it would is if it's projected on the ground it's a bit over here and then the full size of him is just something from up to here and then what I do is I just because I have my lighting set up in this way I just create another line you can hold shift to draw lines like this and then also hold control to be just to have it at perfect angles and I create this kind of help for me so that it is actually uh, like correct, and I don't, I don't really, um, I wouldn't do this. Like for example, this ellipse for him that he's drawing on the ground. I'm not going to be very. Um, I, w I won't worry too much about it. What I just worry about is just yeah, getting the most important location. So this height right then just then just eyeball it and then here it's gonna be one of his hands and then the other hand falls somewhere around here and then you know we also have to connect it together so now if I turn this off paint this in a bit you can see in the preview window I already have a, for example this would be this lag over here just going down there just something like this doesn't need to be super precise to look good just before we close up if you want to save all these settings you did to the tool options and the windows what you want to do is go to edit preferences and then here you have tool options click save tool options now and you can also have the save tool options on exit button checked on and you're just gonna save every time you quit but you also want also want to go to window management and make sure that you have the same here so save window positions on exit or if you don't have this on just click save windows position window positions now and that's it for this tutorial with in this manner i was able to complete this poster you see here you can also see time lapses of some parts of this how i did it and the whole uh, big time lapse of the whole poster on my channel and so see you next time